Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in electrochemistry, we are required to draw the detailed setup of an electrochemical cell. And there are three different types of half cells that we need to be familiar with. So in this video, we want to go through how to draw the three different types of half cells and to draw an electrochemical cell. Now an electrochemical cell, it is otherwise known as a galvanic cell or voltaic cell. It is essentially a battery where we have two half cells connected together. And because of that, there will be a redox reaction occurring and because of the redox reaction, electricity it is being generated. So what we have to do is we have to learn how to draw the detailed setup of an electrochemical cell given the two half cells. So here is a very brief diagram representing the overall electrochemical cell. Essentially, I have two half cells attached together and these two are the electrodes and the electrodes are attached to each other via an external wire through a voltmeter. And we will also need to connect these two half cells together via this salt bridge. Now inside this salt bridge, it is just a salt solution or an electroline. And the function of the salt bridge is of course to connect the two half cells together. Otherwise, without the salt bridge, this circuit will be open and we cannot generate flow of electrons from there. But the salt bridge actually serves another important purpose. It connects the two half cells together, but prevents the direct mixing of the reactants in one half cell from the other half cell. Now in an electrochemical cell, we want the oxidation and reduction to occur at different half cells. So one half cell will undergo oxidation, the other half cell will undergo reduction. And because of that, there will be the generation of electricity or the flow of electrons from the anode to the cathode. Now if the reactants are allowed to mix together, then the redox reaction will occur directly between the reactants and we don't generate electricity from a direct redox reaction. So the purpose of this salt bridge actually is important. It connects the two half cells together so that charges can flow. And at the same time, it prevents the direct mixing of the reactants in both half cells. So the next thing we want to go through is drawing the half cells. Now in total, we have three different types of half cells. And how the half cell looks like, it actually depends on the physical state of the species that is involved inside this half cell. So let's take a look at each of these three half cells. Now the first type of half cell that we will encounter, it is the metal ion half cell, where this reversible electrode or this half cell, it is set up between a metal, which is in a solid state obviously, and the ion in the aqueous state. So let us use zinc 2 plus aqueous and zinc metal as an example. So when we write out this half equation, we will use the exact same version that we encounter in the data booklet, which is always written in reduction form. So we always put the electrons on the left hand side of the half equation, and we always write this in terms of reduction. Zinc 2 plus will be on the left hand side, plus two electrons to give me zinc metal on the right hand side. So in terms of interpretation, in the forward direction, it will be reduction, where zinc 2 plus gains two electrons to be reduced to zinc. And in the reverse direction, which is oxidation, zinc will be oxidized to zinc 2 plus plus two electrons. So in terms of drawing the half cell, we will have this container. It looks like a beaker and I have this solution and I stick this electrode in. Now the zinc metal will function as the electrode and inside this solution, we will need the presence of zinc 2 plus aqueous. And under standard condition, the concentration of ions in solution will have to be one mole per dm cube. So if I have this particular setup, then we say that I will have this half cell established and this half cell or this reversible electrode, it is between zinc 2 plus and zinc metal. Now the second type of half cell that we will encounter, it is the non-metal ion half cell or some schools will call this the gas ion half cell. Now of course gas ion or non-metal ion half cell, it is established between a gas and an ion in the aqueous state. So let us use H plus aqueous and H2 gas as an example. Now this is also the standard hydrogen electrode. So we have an equilibrium or reversible electrode established between H plus and H2. Again, we have to write this in reduction form because this is the exact same presentation that we will find in the data booklet. So on the left hand side, I have two H plus plus two electrons to give me H2. So in terms of interpretation, two H plus will gain two electrons and be reduced to H2. In the forward direction, in the reverse direction, H2 will be oxidized to form two H plus plus two electrons. So the half cell setup will be something like this. Again, I need to have a beaker with a solution, which is one mole per dm cube H plus equals. Remember under standard condition, the concentration of ions, it has to be one mole per dm cube. Now we also need to introduce the H2 gas via this inverted chamber 
and at the side there's an opening for us to pump in this gas now this hydrogen gas it also has to be under standard condition so for gases under standard condition the temperature has to be at 298 kelvin and the pressure has to be one atmosphere now between h plus aqueous and h2 gas none of them can function as the electrode because in order for it to be an electrode it has to be a metal so we will have to externally include an inert electrode which is platinum sometimes we can also use graphite so if there's a need for us to introduce an inner electrode because none of the species inside this system can function as the electrode then we will use platinum or graphite now keep in mind the electrode has to be in contact with both the aqueous phase as well as the gaseous phase now this brings up the question what is the function of the electrode and what is the purpose of the electrode why is there a need for us to stick this electrode into this setup and we say that I need this particular electrode then I can establish this equilibrium between H plus and H2 without the electrode is it possible for us to have this reversible system established now let us discuss the purpose or the function of the electrode because without the electrode actually we cannot really have this reversible system now the purpose of the electrode is to function as an electron bank to transfer electrons now we go to the bank to transfer money right I go to the bank to deposit money and I go to the bank to withdraw money so if the electrode functions as an electron bank then it is a place for the reaction to deposit electrons or withdraw electrons depending on whether it is oxidation or reduction so for example if I use back the same half cell involving H plus and H2 now in the forward direction we know that this is a reduction and 2H plus will gain two electrons to give me H2 now where does this electrons come from what the H plus has to do is the H plus has to gain the electrons from the electrode so the H plus actually has to go to the electrode and it withdraw these electrons from the platinum electrode and it gets reduced so the H plus actually has to gain the electron from platinum so that it can be reduced to form H2 so the platinum electrode functions as an electron bank where H plus will withdraw the electrons from the bank then it can be reduced to H2 now in the opposite direction H2 gets oxidized to H plus and how does it do that now h2 gets oxidized to 2h plus and you have these two electrons lost now where would these electrons go to the h2 will actually have to deposit the electrons at the electrode so the h2 will go to the platinum electrode deposit two electrons to the electrode and it gets oxidized to h plus so we have this here h2 actually loses the electron to the platinum electrode so that it can be oxidized to form h plus so you notice the significance and the importance of the electrode is because this electrode it is where you deposit the electrons if it is an oxidation because all these electrons lost has to be placed somewhere it will be deposited at the electrode and for reduction if the system wants to gain electrons then the system has to go to the electrode and withdraw the electrons from the electrode so that it can be reduced so because of oxidation and reduction it occurs on the surface of the electrode then we notice the significance and the importance of this electrode so without the electrode there's no way this H plus and H2 can be converted to each other now finally we have the third type of half cell which is an ion ion half cell now ion ion half cell it is for systems where both species are aqueous ions so let us use ion 3 plus and ion 2 plus half cell as an example I have ion 3 plus aqueous so it will gain electron to give me ion 2 plus again we write this in the reduction form in the forward direction this is a reduction and in the reverse direction ion 2 plus will be oxidized to form ion 3 plus and electron so oxidation will be the reverse direction in terms of setup it is also fairly straightforward I have a beaker or a container and inside this solution I need to have one more per diem cube of ion 2 plus aqueous and one more per diem cube of ion 3 plus aqueous now remember both of these guys have to be under standard conditions so each of these species has to be one mole per dm cube and remember between ion 2 plus and ion 3 plus none of them can function as the electrode and i would need an electrode to function as an electron bank for the system to transfer electrons so i need this external electrode i need an inner electrode so therefore we will choose platinum as the electrode i need to stick this electrode into the solution so therefore oxidation or reduction can occur on the surface of this electrode 
Now after learning how to draw the three different types of house cells, then what we can do is we can combine any two of them together to form an overall electrochemical cell. So let us use an example involving ion 3 plus and ion 2 plus half cell and H plus and H2 half cells. Now actually the setup, it is just drawing two half cells. So on this side, I will have the ion 3 plus and ion 2 plus half cell. So remember, it is just a beaker of a solution which contains standard condition, one more per dm cube ion 2 plus equals and one more per dm cube ion 3 plus equals. I need a platinum electrode on this side. And on the other side, this is the other half cell which is between H plus equals and H2 gas. So inside this solution, I will have one more per dm cube H plus equals. And inside this chamber, I need to pump in hydrogen gas. Again, at standard condition, it has to be at one atmosphere and at 298 Kelvin. And because H2 gas and H plus equals, none of them can function as the electrode. So I will need this platinum electrode here. I just need to attach the two half cells together by connecting these two guys together using this saw bridge. Now remember the saw bridge functions as a way to attach the two half cells together without the direct mixing of the reactants in this iron half cell and this hydrogen half cell. We will also need to attach both electrodes together via this external wire through this voltmeter so therefore we can measure the potential difference or the voltage of this electrochemical cell. Alright, so that was the discussion involving drawing the three different types of half cells and an overall electrochemical cell. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.